All right, welcome back to another episode of the We Live to Build podcast. I'm here today with Cody Bramlett. We already did a private interview. If you haven't seen that yet, then definitely go check that out. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go to the we live to build.com website and you can find out more information there. So Cody, for the people who don't know who you are yet, why don't you tell them a little bit about what it is you do so that we can set up the uh, topic for today, which is affiliate marketing. Yeah, definitely. I'm really excited to talk about affiliate marketing today because this is an easy way for people to make money without having to invest a lot and without having to, to know a lot. It's really about relationships, which I think is the most powerful thing. So me, um, I started out uh, selling food at restaurants uh, with U.S. Food Service. I was a great sales rep there. I kind of honed my, honed my chops for figuring out how to do the, uh, the door-to-door sales concept. Uh, I hated the job, though, because I had terrible bosses. So I started a gym, a kettlebell gym in San Diego, ran that thing for seven years, realized that making $2,000 a month, working 40 hours a week and being emotionally and fried and exhausted was not what I wanted to do. And I decided to develop a supplement brand. So I created a company called Science Natural Supplements, and we sold turmeric. We were the first major company online to really push it. And the first year of operation, we did two and a half, and then six and a half, and then I think four, and then five, and then four, all selling turmeric with a handful of offers on the back end. Um, We acquire our traffic through affiliate marketing, which is getting people with blogs, email lists, um, other sources of traffic, or people that just know how to know how to get traffic to promote you and you pay them a commission for every single sale that happens. Um, And we'll go into depth about that. Um, There's a whole structure and way of building a certain type of sales page and certain type of offer or video that allows these things to convert. And you have a, we we like to see things converting between one to 3% conversion rate. And basically it's just when you get an offer that works and a network of people that know, like, and trust you, it's just like printing money. And on our bad months, we'll do a half a million. On our good months, we'll do 2 million. Every month is profitable. And the coolest part is we've actually created our business to be really more about a customer acquisition. And we monetize on the back end. So the second, third, fourth sale that people make is where we make our true um, profits and the majority of our profits. So today I'm an open book to explain the whole darn thing. Um, I do coach people how to do this as well, just to get it, get it out in the open because I love to make sure people do it the right way. I've made a million dollars of mistakes and I'm open about those too. So I think on our last call, we went into a few of them and they were, they were painful. Um, but uh, yeah, so today it's all about teaching you guys what you want to build, how you want to get traffic to it, and how to make money once you have it working. All right, great. Thank you for the intro. I appreciate it. So I just want to clarify something real fast. You said between half a million and two million a month from affiliates? Yeah, in, in terms of uh, revenue, not profit, but yes. Uh, so a slow, slow month, half million, big month, two million. I mean, I have one coaching client right now that's doing, I think, 30 this month. So it can the sky is the limit. Um, he is truly a unique, one-of-a-kind kind of company, but to be able to do, um, you know, two, three hundred thousand a month in revenue is really achievable for pretty much anybody. It's just a matter of having focus and staying on track. And, and within six months to a year, you can have that without having massive skills. You don't need to be an incredible copywriter, incredible ad buyer, an incredible salesperson. You just have to know what to do, when to do it. And as long as you're a kind, nice person who wants to be people's friends, it's possible. What percent would you say your affiliate marketing generates in terms of total revenue? The idea is you're trying to acquire a customer by paying as much as possible. And then once you have them, you make money in the back end by promoting offers that are only to customers you already have, by re-promoting the same offer, or by sharing other third-party offers that convert well. And you have to kind of do all three of those things to truly be successful. In terms of the company's overall revenue, this year, I think we're on track to do about $8 million in sales. So that's front end sales, and then about 2 million on the email list. Now the email list is about 80, 90% profit. And then on the actual product sales, it's about 15, 10% profit. So the idea of where revenue comes and where profit comes is a big kind of lopsided 80, 20 kind of thing. Um, but they are needed without having the customer acquisition. You can't develop an email list that has life and longevity because no one's going to stay on your email list forever. Um, and without having a strong back end and email focused uh, mindset, you can't make any money because you're not making enough money in the front end to be a successful company for the amount of staff and time and people and energy you need to grow the business correctly. Okay, so I, I didn't quite hear an actual percentage though of what the affiliates were for the total revenue. Oh. 100%. So you own, you 100% of your revenue comes from affiliates. Yes. Most companies will, they, they can figure out how to do ads on their own. Maybe you are a person who has had experience with Facebook or YouTube in that aspect. 
Um, I don't. I never did. I started this uh, six, seven years ago now. And back then it was a lot more of a wild west on um, Facebook. And you had to be a really aggressive marketer and you couldn't compete with these people. It was hard to win in any aspect. And so I just avoided that and kept working with affiliates. Now, there are affiliates who are Facebook people. I had this wonderful affiliate for a year who drove probably $4 million to one of my offers. <clears throat> he found a target audience. He found an ad set that worked. And then I just paid him like a hundred bucks per conversion. I made about five bucks in profit and he just printed me customers all day long. So there's certain affiliates out there that are great in these aspects. They're harder to find because they tend to usually gravitate towards large companies or really successful offers. And those are usually the ones who are the top three to five offers you'll see on platforms like ClickBank, Digistore, and BuyGoods, which are the large marketplaces for people who are looking for affiliate offers to promote. Um, but yeah, it, it's um, always been affiliates, always been about that. This year's goal is building an internal sales team that can do Facebook and YouTube and things along those lines. Um, but that's a year and a half long game plan. It's not a thing I expect to have printing money instantaneously because that would be crazy to have that wish. As an entrepreneur, you, you want things to go a lot faster than they actually go. Um, so I'm curious, how do you find people to be affiliates and how do you convince them to work with you? Perfect. So um, the first step is having an offer and we'll get into that a little later, but assuming you have an offer that, that converts at one and a quarter to one and a half percent on, on a typical list. And let's just go with the most general offer there is weight loss, right? O online there's how do I make money online and how do I lose weight? Those are the two biggest um, money-making ways to, to, to two biggest ways to make money online. So Obviously, I have a coaching program on how to make money <laughs> by selling how to lose weight. Boom, boom. Um, with the idea of losing weight, you have a great offer, one and a quarter, one and a half percent conversion rate. And then you go out and you put that offer on these platforms. So as you start out as a beginner, you have no street cred. No one knows who you are. And in this space, affiliates or people, list owners like myself who promote other offers get burned occasionally. I have a gentleman in my coaching group who was burned by a gigantic 30, 40, 50 million dollar year company because they just stopped their affiliate program and uh, forgot to pay him for a year. And, and, and the gentleman in my group, he's, he's an OG person. He's been in this space forever. And so it's you get burned by the people you least expect sometimes. And so a lot of um, uh, list owners and traffic owners are very weary about just promoting someone who has their own platform. So ideally, you take your product once it's tested and good and you put the offer in the funnel on ClickBank, BuyGoods, Digistore, or a combination of one or two or three of them. Each platform has their uh, the affiliates that prefer to be on that platform, but I would say, you know, 70, 80% are on ClickBank, probably 20% or so are on BuyGoods, 10% are on Digistore. <clears throat> so you have your offer, let's say on ClickBank, because it's the biggest platform out there. They have a whole marketplace that has a thing called uh, gravity. So as you, as you increase sales, you raise up, you get ranked, there's a scorecard on there. And if you have a super mega off awesome unicorn offer, which I think there's two or three a year, you automatically shoot to number one. But there's a bunch of people playing games on there to, to rank the top 20, top 30. So in order to actually get free affiliates from ClickBank or BuyGoods, you have to have a crazy good offer. So you got to scrap that idea because the chances of your offer being a unicorn are very limited. Um, and the next step is then we just said, how do you get the, uh, the affiliates? So you reach out to ClickBank, your account manager, reach out to BuyGoods, Digistore. They have a, a, a plethora of affiliates that they can introduce you to or get your offer in front of. After that, the next step is how do you meet these people and how do you meet more? So I always tell my wife, when I go out to conferences and do stuff, I'm just out there shaking hands and kissing babies because all you're doing is acting like a politician and making friends. So you go to events. There's an event in San Diego in September called Traffic and Conversion. That is the event to go to. There's an event in January called Affiliate Summit West in Las Vegas. That's the one to go to. There's one that just happened in, in New York called Affiliate Summit East. There's Affiliate Summit World. You go to these events, you book coffee dates with every single person you know and, and lunch dates, and you make friends with them. And you, guess, you be their friend, you be their advocate. If your offer is not good for them, you find a way to help them by introducing them to someone else, by um, you know writing them a blog post because it helps their offer, by referring them to someone they, they wanna hire because you know someone that could be a good fit for them, whatever it may be, you be their advocate and their friend. Because as you start to go, grow in this industry, if everyone knows, likes, and trusts you, when your offer does work, they're gonna drive a ton of traffic. And if your offer's okay, they're gonna throw you a bone and send you your offer occasionally as opposed to never at all. So you go to conferences, you make friends. 
Um, the next, the next step is of course saying, Hey, my offer did good. Do you know anybody you could refer me to, right? Could you introduce me to someone else? If you make friends with somebody, like I made friends with Sean, if I need something, I'm going to help and say, Hey, Sean, you got anybody that could be good in here. And he's gonna be like, Hmm, maybe. And then if it comes along a month from now or two weeks from now, he's gonna be like, Oh, that person's gonna be a great fit for what Cody was looking for. So that idea of being able to, um, ask someone for help, ask someone who they could refer you to is, is key and important. And then finally being a part of groups. I have the Supplement Millionaire Mastermind. We teach people how to build offers, right? How to run their offers, how to structure their offers. You join our group, you instantly meet 40 people who can drive your, to your offer and be friends with you. There's other groups. Um, uh, there's a group called um, uh, Traffic Tribe. Uh, Amber Spears runs it. She's a great uh, teacher of how to be an affiliate manager and a great connector. There's like 300 people in her group. It's, it's a more virtual Facebook one, but that's huge. The more groups you get involved with, with free Facebook groups, groups that cost a couple hundred bucks a month, master finds that cost 10 grand a year, the more you're involved in them, the more people you meet, the more people you get introduced to. So it's just about spreading out your social network of people in the space, asking who you could get introduced to and going from there. And of course, all this stems back from the fact that you have to have an offer that functionally works and is something that's worth talking about. Because if your offer converts at a half a percent, there's no reason why anybody should ever want to promote you. So you, you're you wasting a lot of time because you need to be focusing on perfecting that offer. Once you convince them to give you a chance, is there like a... A, a, a sales process or an onboarding process? Like how does, what's that next step look like? Definitely. It's all about making it as simple as possible. So a, a good example, Savannah, who runs our, our sales team right now, she probably gets a hundred emails a day, not from inside the company, from people reaching out being like, will you promote me? Hi, can I talk to you? Hi, can I waste your time? Whatever it may be. Um, you know, before I had passed everything off to her, I was just getting hit up on Skype by just networks and people who drive traffic, just trying to get my attention because they're hoping that I can either drive traffic to their offers or they can drive traffic to mine. And a lot of times it's never a good fit. So these people are slammed. If you can get someone to agree to talk to you, that's the first step, right? You can have a conversation with them in person, uh, Skype conversation, whatever it is. The next step is to get them to remember you. Right. So one of the things we do, we give people a mini gift, a Starbucks gift card. Right. Or I find out that they love wine, get them a, a, a bottle from a wine.com kind of thing. Do something to share love. You know, it's the idea of uh, Bill Glazer and Dan Kenny. They talked about how to get it, it, it in front of somebody. You don't send them a sales envelope or a, hey, check this thing out. One of the things, ideas they had before was sending an umbrella with all the letters stuffed in the umbrella that explain what it is. So if, it, if, if an owner receives an umbrella, they're like, what? And they open it up and they're very curious. So you want someone to remember you, you want to be likable, and you want to make sure that that connection is, is made. Then they agree to, to test your offer. Yeah, no problem. I'll test your offer. You want to be, of course, gentle because you're new and not over demanding and annoying because you're new, and then they're going to ignore you. Um, you want to make sure you're talking to the right person. So you, if you're contacting my sales manager, the first thing is, hey, do you have an affiliate manager or someone on your team I should be working with? So that way you don't have to spend all this time with me. And, they, and if they do, if they have some underlings that, that uh, can run, run the stuff for them, that, that saves them time. And that staff, those staff are usually a lot more um, less bombarded by emails. So you have your offer. They agreed to do it. They already know I can trust you. The key is then sending them everything in a clean, consistent place. So in ClickBank and BuyGoods, everyone has an ID. And their ID goes into the link in a way to track it. And it tracks commissions. And ClickBank and BuyGoods pays the affiliates automatically. Because um, if your offer's on there, then ClickBank's paying you the remainder of the money. It's a really cool system that saves you a ton of time and energy every single month. So you just basically set up their link for them. So it's the correct link with the correct tracking on it. You'd give them the appropriate email creatives, swipes, um, any, any imagery, any blog posts, anything they requested and needed, but only what they need. You wouldn't give them, hey, here's 20 email swipes, mail one, right? No, you want to give them the top two that work. This one does great, and this one also does great, but this one is better. Make it simple so that way they can paste the email in, put in the hyperlink, hit send. Um, the next step, of course, is follow-up to give them stats back. One of the things that I pride my team with is they provide stats to people constantly, especially if they're new and they're testing the offer. You know, here's how they did in our metrics. Here's the conversions. Here's the clicks. Here's the earnings per click. Here's how much you made. Um, you know, and then the goal is the goal is then to find out did that drop that promotion equal what they expected. So if someone makes a thousand dollars a day on average for emailing an offer, and they only made eight hundred dollars when they promoted you, 
your goal is to find out what that number was. So it's a thousand to see if you could increase their commission or if you can do anything to make it up so that way they can make that average because people are all about the dollars. Sometimes they'll throw you a bone, but it's just like they have to meet their, their, their metrics. Not everybody has the same metric. Like our company tends to look at eCPM, which is earnings per thousand cent. So for every thousand emails we send, we should make X amount of dollars. And that's the metric we tend to look at because it does allow for list growth to look at and changes to be able to those variables to be able to understand how well the offer is doing now and later versus different lists. But some people have earnings per click they care about. Some people care about money, a, a dollar amount per drop. It just all depends on the actual um, company. So understanding what those things are, reporting back to them, understanding if you can meet that mark and how you can get to that mark. Um, and then just overly impressing them. We've had instances before where we were so far off with a good affiliate that we wrote them a blank check, not a blank check, but like, hey, they, they should have made $3,000 more. Here's four. I'm sorry it didn't go your way. I'm gonna work on it again and I'll let you know when it's live so I can have you test the offer again to make it more successful. And when I do those types of things, people are impressed, they remember, and they're like, yeah, I'll test it again because they know there's no risk because I'm gonna throw them a bone if there's a problem. I'm curious, you were talking about different uh, ways to track the success of a specific promotion. Um, it, you, you mentioned one was uh, earnings per thousand uh, emails. Um, can you go into how you actually figure out those numbers? I'm not the best for explaining the exact how to match it done without having a spreadsheet in front of me, but I can kind of walk through all the different aspects. So we'll just take my company, for example, when we're testing an offer. So I have, a, I have a brand new collagen offer I want to test. So we'll send an email to it. And let's say we send 10,000 emails. We know how many we sent. We know how many clicks or how many people opened that email. And we know how many people clicked that email. So we want to make sure that the right open happens, right, right percentage of opens. And we're shooting for 30% because since the Apple thing happened, you got to be high because if you're at like 20%, that probably means in reality, you had like 10% of people opening, which means your emails are tanking and no one wants to inbox your emails like Yahoo and Google are just putting you in spam. So you're shooting for like a 30% open rate. Um, with, the, uh, with the open rate being correct, that means you had a good subject line as well as a, a, a healthy list. Um, the next step is to understand the click-through rate. And you can look at click through for how many people that opened versus how, or the amount of people that were sent to. Those are two different metrics you can look at. And the click through rate is an indicator of did the email do its job and get someone to go to the sales page? So we're looking at that metric. Then we're looking at the amount of clicks that landed on the sales page and the amount of people that purchased um, from those clicks. That conversion rate there matters. That's the one we want to have one and a quarter plus on it, one and a quarter at a minimum to be a, a successful offer. Um, and then of course, if you had a low click through rate and a low open, then the conversions will be different. Like good, a good example, I have, um, a weight loss offer. You get more clicks to those. Hey, discover the secret to learn how to lose weight. And then I have another offer. That's just get turmeric, buy one, get three free. So the email is like, do you like turmeric? Do you want free bottles free? Click this button. It has less clicks because in only you're only going to click it. If you know, you want turmeric. If you don't give a crap or you already bought turmeric, you're not going to click it. So the conversion rate will be different on that page because the clicks are going to be more of a um, proven audience than a curiosity email to a curiosity weight loss offer to a curiosity um, remedy to solve a problem. So they're all kind of different. And then it all kind of then looks at to the revenue that's generated. So your commission that's generated. You ideally, like, again, want to meet that, that affiliates mark. So let's say that email list is $1,000 whether you sell one or that cost, whether you have one conversion and pay a thousand dollars commission or 10 and pay a hundred or 20 and pay 50, it's irrelevant as long as that affiliate and traffic source makes the money they expect for that drop. And that can be looked at through the drop, just how much money was made from promoting your offer that one time. It can be looked at through earnings per click. So they look at the number of clicks they sent and how much money they made and divide it out. And they're looking for a particular number for that list. Could be a dollar on that list, could be $4, depending on the list, whatever it is. But usually a dollar is a healthy healthy um, uh, conversion. And then the eCPM is what we look at because the eCPM uh, ignores the email. So if the email did not convert and get enough clicks to the page, it looks back at how many emails we sent. And so we can have a better idea of how that list works. So if you sent to 10,000 people 
and you made a thousand dollars, that means there's a hundred dollar CPM, ten dollar CPM. I can't remember. I'm terrible at math. Um, some something like that. <laughs> um, and so we teach we we in our coaching program, of course, my affiliate manager teaches all this stuff. She has examples of what to do. She teaches people how to send an email appropriately so it's clean, clear, and concise. That way, people don't get confused. Um, and, and the key is just being as clear as possible and helpful as possible to the people driving traffic. So that way you can build that working relationship with them and not just be like, oh, cool, they sent for me. And then like a month later being like, why aren't they sending again? Because you, you haven't developed a relationship. You have to kind of have that constant dialogue to be like, cool, awesome. I'm glad it did well for you. Are you going to queue it up for next month? What can we do for you? We're doing a contest next month. You should promote during that time because you're going to get an extra, you could win an extra $5,000 or whatever it is. It's really complicated in terms of all of the nuances of the relationships with keeping them happy and making sure that the metrics are right. Um, you were saying that it's important for you to know that you're at least hitting their expectations for what they will earn. Is that as simple as like, hey, how much do you expect to earn? 100%. Are you guys, uh, does ECPM matter or does ECPM matter to you? Are you looking for earnings per click? Do, how much do you typically make when you send to a drop? Those kinds of things all matter. And of course, you want to tell them what their commission is ahead of time. Like, hey, you're a $50 per conversion. And this offer has a 3% conversion rate. You want to be honest about that ahead of time. So you're not like trying to like squeeze cash out of them, not give them money. You know, if someone says they make $4,000 a drop and they make 4,500 and I look at my offer and I made more than normal, I'm like, guess what? You actually made five and going forward, you're going to make more money every time you send. Because the goal is if you can pay for the most, if whoever can pay for the pay the highest for the traffic wins. And by the way, all these stats and metrics are not exclusive to affiliates. If you're looking at buying ads, it's all the same metrics and conversions. It's just different lingo. You're worried about the conversion on the ad. You're worried about the conversion on the page. You're worried about the click-through rate. You're worried about the cost and the bid. And the whole thing comes back to, um, you know, are you making money every time they convert? And um, it, are the people happy? Um, in the affiliate world too, you can also buy list drops. So you can come to us and be like, hey, Cody, can I buy a drop? And I'll be like, sure, I got a list for $1,000. I got a list for $4,000. And you can buy it. And of course, it's the same as buying ads on Facebook or buying ads on, um, on, on YouTube or Google. Um, you're just understanding that you have a budget and you spent that much and you're hoping to make it back and you're trying to figure out what the metrics are to achieve that. So you're saying if I have an e-commerce product, I can buy from you the ability to promote my product to your list. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. there's plenty of people that do do that. I would never recommend it, especially from an e-commerce product because you need to have an average order value, if you have a 1.5% converting page, you need to have about $180 average order value because you're going to need to pay about $100 per conversion to be able to meet that metric. So if I had a $1,000 list, you would need to have a, a, a page that will convert 10 people and you need to be making at least $100 profit per, per customer to be able to pay me. So it, it's... um. The game truly is about learning to build a funnel that can have an average order value of 150 to 250 and then have a high conversion rate of, you know, one and a half to 3%. And obviously if the conversion rate's higher, you can pay less per conversion. If the conversion rate's lower, you have to pay more because you have to be able to meet that traffic sources minimum to make them happy. My mind's blown here. I, I've, I've never dealt with affiliates. I mean, I did... When I was doing consulting, I would have people refer to me. You'd call it affiliate if you want. And they would refer clients to me. And I just knew, you know, there's like a 90% chance that this person's going to close because using the psychology of trust and having the client who trusts the refer, you know, selling my service, they're then transferring their trust over to me. So it's like really easy for me to get their trust. So it's very different because it's a manual, you know, it's one on one. But the deals were five, six figures. So, um, it's a lot easier because then you go, hey, look, I'm just going to give you 10% of what they pay me. And like my goal is to maximize what I can charge and, you know, whatever that is, it's, it's good for you. So, you know, sometimes people were getting 10,000, 15,000 commissions and they're like, I'm going to just keep bringing you money because like you're paying for my college or you're paying for a house for my mom or whatever it was. Um, but like, I didn't have to ever think, sorry, to cut off. I never had to think about conversion rates and clicks and ads. And I never dealt with any of that stuff. This is like very foreign. It's an entirely separate layer because you still have to do that, making friends with people 
and getting them to know, like, and trust you, but then they're not paying you, you're paying them based on how well the offer converts or some kind of reciprocal in that way. Because another thing you can do too is like swaps, you know, hey, you, you promote me, I promote you. And as long as it's fair enough for both of you, cool. Maybe it's not as good as normally, but I got a, I got an extra email to promote my offer. So there's a lot of tit for tat in the industry um, that's more frowned upon now because a lot of people who want that usually have a crappy offer. It doesn't convert. So one person gets the short end of the stick in that kind of scenario. Um, but it's really about making friends with them. So they want to continue working with you and then proving that your offer does well on their list. So they make the metrics they need. Otherwise, they're going to promote the other crappy offer on ClickBank about you know, drink this coffee, lose weight, you know, kind of thing. The whole layer one make friends and give them a great offer like that's that's natural for me but all of the the tiny nuances of the metrics and the math and all of that is like that that's what's that's what's unique i was uh fortunate my brother had gotten into space with a workout program um before me and he was probably doing it for about a year and a half two years before me and so he understood and got to kind of figure out all the stuff and then when i jumped in he kind of helped me for six first six months and i was just like what what is EPC? What is it? You know, it was all completely foreign and it does take time. And that was one of the reasons why um, I was happy to make a coaching program because we teach all this stuff. We beat it in through videos. We give examples on, on, on all, all the forms, all the sheets that we use internally for our eight figure company. So you people can use it successfully when they're starting out and know from the beginning where they are versus being confused and lost as you slowly grow up until you finally have the time and energy and understanding to get it. And there's other groups too, again, like Traffic Tribe that are phenomenal and they teach all these things and which were things were not didn't exist when I first started. So there's the good part is where you meet people are where these things are being taught. So you're gonna come into it novice and new, but people will be like, oh, you're new, cool, your offer's neat, neat. Um, this is how we do things, welcome to the group. And they're they're very, as long as you're open, honest, and truthful, people are very receiving and nice and they don't hate you if your offer sucks. They're just going to wait for you to make it better. And this isn't crucial because I, I, there's two, two ladies in this space that are just amazing. They're just uber successful. And both of them, when I first met them, were nobodies with offers that didn't work. And now they're probably twice as big as my company and have been successful for years. So they, everyone knows that everyone, not everyone, but there's a huge, good chance that someone will have a great offer eventually. So everyone wants to remain friends and stay connected because it just takes that right headline, right video, right product, right story, whatever it is, um, that hits the mark for that day and time. And then suddenly that's the offer everyone wants to promote. And you want to make sure you're, you're friends with that person and they don't, they don't hate you because you gave them crap when you, they first started out. <laughs> Do you use affiliates to drive traffic to your coaching program about teaching affiliates? So that's an interesting thing. Like I've had a hard time finding a lot of affiliates that do that. Most affiliates are into promoting to uh, direct to customer. And because we teach people who are either 100% serious, you know, they're ready to invest 20 grand into starting a business, not through coaching, but to like build their company, or people that already have existing businesses, um, they're not as targetable of an audience. Now, a good example is ClickBanker Buy Goods. We're trying, we're right now in the process of partnering with them so they can go, hey, all of our clients that already have companies, here's a coaching program that might help you be better. So in, in terms of the affiliate in those aspects, that's what we're targeting to do. But there's very few traffic sources out there that drive direct to our kinds of offers. Um, there's ones that'll do the, hey, for $49, I'll teach you how to buy do buy ads on Facebook and do this kind of thing. And they're kind of just overly promising how you can make millions, but they're only teaching step one of 50. <laughs> that takes years to get through. And those ones can get traffic, but in our hiring space, it doesn't really exist. And also, I don't, I don't necessarily want it. I only want to help people who are serious. I've already had a handful of cl um, coaching clients that found me through whatever social media channels or something like that, or saw a podcast that just weren't really into it and quit after three months. So like, I'm not, I'm not interested in wasting my time with those people, only serious people that actually want to build a business or have a business that they want to improve upon. It's interesting that you're thinking about partnering with a ClickBank or something like that. Um, I have a pretty wide network and a lot of the people I know are like agency owners, right? They'll do digital marketing, they'll do social media, they'll do PR, they'll do, uh, you know, email marketing, whatever. So I was thinking that I could actually go to those kinds of people and talk to them about the service I provide. 
Do you know anyone like that? Or you're just thinking about these larger companies? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. So within my coaching program, we actually have about 50 videos. And each of those videos, uh, is, I bring on experts, I bring on people who we work with, we contract with, for example, the best customer service agency I love, they're called Help Grid. Phenomenal. They make us money. They made me $300,000 in five years. Most customer services cost people money. So, you know, I recommend the best people. And of course, they give me a little cutback as a thank you. So we're doing that on that side. But then we're also going back to them now that we have developed our program out, you know, much stronger and saying, hey, can you share this with your clientele? Because we want to help rise the entire tide up. We want to lift the whole um, industry up. And if you have 25 people that are doing the exact same thing that we're teaching, well, I'd love to share it with them because probably 10% of them want to improve their business or realize they need to take that next step to become a CEO, to be able to have an entire team who can build um, the offers and the, the, the structure. And you don't have to work every day in, in the business, but instead work on the business. Um, and I want to reach out to those groups as well. So we, we are in that process. I'm excited right now because, you know, I started the coaching a year and a half ago and it really was... I wanted to learn from a handful of friends who are in the industry who were smaller than I, I am and give them as much advice as possible. And I learned what their needs were, and then I in turn made the program better. And then I learned what they needed next, and I in turn made the program better. And so the whole idea for me is um, not to just make as much money as possible right now. It's to build something that has longevity, that actually provides a service that actually is worthwhile in the long run that people don't want to to leave you know there's there's a eos there's uh all those big uh coaching programs out there for businesses i want to be that for the direct marketing supplement space and that's what we're pushing to do um and yeah looking for affiliates in that world is different than for the actual direct to consumer um but i would consider that idea of like what you mentioned or click bank as an affiliate as well so it it's definitely the same concept so what are some things that you're thinking about or struggling with um, on either either business right now? The biggest struggle of all is what's next, right? That's the, so coming up with the next offer, the next best thing is this, uh, you know, with the economy changing and, and taking a downturn, do we want to make discount brands, make them more more exclusive? Do we want to have a more aggressive offer that solves a more niche, pro niche problem in someone's life? Um, are we looking more general health? You know, we, we kind of determine what that is and it's it's hard because at this point, Science Little Supplements has kind of ran its life course as a brand. And, um, you know, when we had when we had more aggressive Facebook advertisers advertising us. We had a lot of flack from people because a lot of nobodies and weirdo people online who want to complain about everything, see our ads and our articles. And they're just like, yeah, I never buy from this company. They're terrible. And I'm like, you didn't even buy something from me. How can you call me terrible? Like I provide something that actually works. And I have like, you know, five star reviews all over Amazon. What are you talking about? So um, we're determining now how to either turn the company into multiple brands or rename it to one larger brand so that way we can have a fresh face. That's my big one. And the second one is, of course, understanding how to structure the team amongst the different services and brands that we have and partnerships I have. So that way there's a cohesive understanding of responsibility for the team, um, a cohesive, cohesive understanding of how you're going to be compensated for bonuses when you achieve your results for the team. And really understanding, you know, who's in charge of what. So that way I'm not getting asked questions from my fulfillment manager dealing with the warehouse because I'm so far disconnected from that. The only conversation I should be having is with the owner about, hey, your team's not doing a good enough job. You need to go whip them into shape because they're not answering my staff's questions. Like that's all I should be involved in. Um, so it's it's making sure that we have the right vertical, right company structure and continue to tweak that so it makes sense for the company as it evolves. Am I right in saying that it was your brother that kind of taught you about the affiliate model when you first got started? Opposite. So I was involved with Bill Glazer and Dan Kennedy's. They had these, uh, um, if, anybody, if you guys haven't heard about them, you got to just type in Bill Glazer, Dan Kennedy. They have a ton of books, like no BS marketing. The term swipe and deploy comes from Bill Glazer. Dan Kennedy's been around forever. He has tons of letters, tons of stuff about direct marketing. And they teach the idea of storytelling right? Story star solution. There's a story about a person. Uh, they found a star or a guru to help them and they found that solution. And lo and behold, here's the solution. It's an ebook. It's a course. It's a how to, it's a product. And that idea of direct marketing has been done forever. Um, there's, you know, they, they talk about in there, they talk about people who've written stuff for wristwatches and glasses and all stuff like that. And, and how it's gone from being copy in newspapers and magazines to mail to email and online. Um, so I learned from them. I was in a, a 
a, a group there trying to figure out how to use that approach for my gym, which I think I did a pretty good job considering I was in a warehouse in the back of a back of a complex. And I somehow got 200 members in a very niche kind of gym too, teaching kettlebells only. It was a very niche gym at the time. Um, and uh, so I kind of learned from that. And then I happened to fall across another, another um, group for the gym coaching. And they happened to have a digital marketing course. And I my, brought my brother to the event the second year and we signed up to how to do that. And we actually created an entire online video course, kind of like P90X, but with kettlebells. So we filmed the whole thing at my gym. We had like the little flip cameras that were um, like the, the Canon Zi80s or something like that. And like the little tiny cameras and we had microphones and it was just all completely shoestring budget with some friends who could film it. it took us like six months to edit the whole thing. And, we, and then we got it done and we brought it back to the coaching group. And they're like, well, no one does videos. It's all PDFs. We'll give it a try. A year later, everyone was doing videos, by the way. So we, we kind of beat them to the punch. But we sold like $20,000 in a week from we had one, one, one guy promote us. And then after that, we were like, what do we do? And my brother's, my brother's wife had just become pregnant. And so he kind of just did his own thing and created an a online uh, training, training how to train people online, train people online kind of thing. So then he expanded that to his huge company as now. And at the time I had a really successful job, was making six figures. I call it the golden handcuffs. And um, I just didn't care or know what to do next. And so I just kind of quit and was focused on my gym and didn't do the online thing. My brother continued it for the next two years, understood all those things. And then we were on a family vacation. I was saying how much I hate my gym and I hate my life. And he's like, you should do supplements. And that idea spent from there. And he kind of gave me some advice to get going and took off. I made a video course in 2015 i think it was it was about how to be how to become a millionaire using wechat which is a chinese application and i was i i was doing some trainings online with people with chinese people who could speak english about uh you know positive psychology personal growth and development emotional intelligence empathy these kinds of things something that like they were so happy about because they really couldn't find it anywhere else in China, um, especially not in Chinese, because those things are, I don't want to say taboo, but just not really well ingrained in their society yet. And so I decided to take money I was earning from them and fund a six week trip to Thailand where my sole focus was creating a video course for something else. And I, I went through, I, I did it. it, took me six weeks, Thankfully, I wasn't videoing myself. I figured out a way so that I could just do like PPT images. You know, the, the, the slides turn into like uh, individual JPEGs. And I recorded because like I, I had a lot of experience with recording things with my voice. And I knew from my, my business before that, because I was doing like a podcast for that too. But there was no video that everyone was like, oh, I love hearing your voice. Because this again, I was talking about psychology and all of that in, in English. And they were like, I love your voice. Like some people are like, I, I need to hear your voice before I fall asleep. Some of weird, some weird stuff. Um, I had, I had like 10,000 plus people listening to this content. It's very strange in China. And uh, so I was like, okay, I know I don't need to record my face for this. I can just use my voice. People like it, whatever. And I did it. It only took six weeks, but like it was all day, every day, like every waking moment, it just like focused on, on making that course. And it was very difficult, but taught me a lot. Actually, it was a really cool experience. I, I put it on Udemy. I had, I didn't have a following for WeChat. It's like all of my efforts have been in China for Chinese people who could speak English. And this was like, uh, for foreigners who are thinking about being in China or something like that, totally different audience had no, no budget for marketing, anything I was, you know, I was not doing too well at, yet. And, uh, to this day, I still get cut checks from Udemy, like five dollars, ten dollars a month, like five, six, seven years later. So, the uh, the course paid for my trip to Thailand over the last few years. What you put together there, that is an incredible course, right? That idea of sharing that. And I know people right now are probably listening, being like, well, "What is my thing? I was stuck on this forever. What is my singular thing?" Um, it doesn't have to be special. You don't have to be the best person in the world to know to, what it is. You don't have to be the biggest expert in the world to teach it. You just got to be the best expert in the room, know the most in the room. And so it's understanding where you are in your growth and, and what you can share with someone else. Um, it's understanding, uh, you know, what, what you could put together and the idea of filming an entire course and, and, you know, selling a course, filming it, and then having a product from it is absolutely um, genius. A lot of people do that concept, especially when you already have a 
people listening to you. I mean, that's would be our, our next way of doing stuff right now. We're working on a, how to help CEOs train their staff to run all these weekly, quarterly, yearly meetings and have all the expectations that myself and my CEO have. So we're putting that together. And then we're going to use that with our one-on-one coaching clients and teach them over the next six months to a year. And then when it's done, we'll have another course to sell. So uh, it's, it's really, you know, understanding to use your leverages, things you do every day that you're proud of, and then teaching others how to do that is a potential way to build a company, build a business, build a brand. My focus going forward with coaching is going to be on helping uh, entrepreneurs that are doing like 200 ish K a year to reach, you know, a million a year or more. And I think that after like a year of coaching people would be an amazing course for people who don't want to spend the you know tens of thousands that it would it would be to run through it you know one on one over months and months. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that because then by the time I get all of those people there and the and the course is done, then like those people they're going to be you know into the multiple seven figures, and then it's like okay, well, what can I help them with then? And then how, how does that turn into a course? And then it's like oh. You know, maybe these guys are hitting eight figures. Well, now, how do you, you know, help them with that? Maybe that's a course is how they go from seven to eight. So there's um, there's a lot in there for to look forward for, to for sure. So what's something that I didn't ask you about that you'd like to mention? Um, I'd love to kind of talk about the production of your offer, the sales page, because what you kind of mentioned like how you can create a product, especially if it's not in the in the supplement space, you know, you could do that idea for a, a exercise program, stretching program, a coaching program of any kind, a, a, you know, a mindset program, you can create those kinds of things. As long as you have a camera and a microphone, you can make it right. Anybody can do video editing. Um, and the next question is, how do you actually sell it to get affiliates to promote it? And that sales page is the key. Um, now there's two types, well, let's say three types of sales pages. So the first is the I call it the e -com hybrid. This is more for a physical product that's a lower ticket and more well-known. I call it in the zeitgeist. So turmeric, it's in the zeitgeist. Everyone knows what it is. Um, Moringa is now, but it didn't used to be. Um, so we have a page that's buy one, get three free turmeric. And it's just a page about how great turmeric is. It's kind of like a hybrid of a blog and an e-commerce page. It's got an aggressive close. It's got some teasing at the beginning. It has a little video of me being like, hey guys, do you wanna reduce inflammation? Blah, 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 blah. Well, here's an amazing thing. Have you heard of turmeric? It does all these things for you. And turmeric's great, blah, blah, blah. It's great, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and right now you can get a great deal and it's guaranteed, right? So we have that entire little short video at the short page. And those are really great for something that's a lower ticket and something that's in the zeitgeist and understandable. It doesn't require a wealth of explaining five minute video of explanation, you know, a four scrolls and you understand what's going on. The next type of sales page is what's called a long form sales page or a TSL text sales page, text sales lander. These are almost 10,000 word stories. And earlier I mentioned story star solution, that kind of concept. This is what they are. They are, Hey, I, you know, so embarrassed on my 40th birthday, uh, my pants split open and I'm so, you know, not happy. And my husband divorced me because I don't, didn't, you know, you know, the terrible stuff, right? Telling a terrible story that happens. These are what grab the emotional connection of somebody and allow someone to feel like they've been listened to or heard in the first time in their life. Because so many people sit with these dark fears, anxieties, and sadnesses, and they're never heard. They're never listened to. They're never, never shared or spoken to. And these sales pages basically tell their story, but then show them that there is a way out. You can do this exercise program. You can take the supplement. You can follow this mindset course, whatever it may be. So it's telling the person's story of loss and struggle, telling the worst how they hit their rock bottom, and then telling the story of how they discovered their way to get out. So like I mentioned in the last um, podcast we did, how the, my first sales page was about turmeric. My dad's doctor told him to go eat turmeric. And that kind of developed the whole idea of the sales page. And we told the science of turmeric, how it's so amazing, how you need bioprene with turmeric to actually get absorption and make reduce inflammation. Inflammation is one of the biggest health problems that we don't realize exists in Western society. And it's killing everybody, making everybody sick. Um, and then we have the paid, you know, but now you can get turmeric. It's amazing. It's easy. It's free. We'll ship it to you. It's fast. It's guaranteed for 180 days and a discount below. Save 20%, get free shipping, click this button. And those sales pages exist. And the last one, of course, is a video sales letter, which is very similar to the course you were talking about, 
where traditionally it was literally a slide deck with just text on a screen and then someone reading the background and occasionally an image would slide up. And they've gotten more advanced where they'll be, um, the first 15 minutes will be more of a, uh, um, a production, sometimes filmed with um, the owners or, or people, sometimes just uh, uh, stock footage because there's so much stock footage online now, it's insane. Um, and they put together like a little movie at the beginning and then it rolls into that whole story and then um, the science behind it and then the sale and the close. And so those three types of stories are how you create that sales page. Now, the most important part of all, if you are not an accomplished writer right now, listening to this, you are not allowed to write your sales page. I'm gonna put my foot down right now. You are not doing it. Because if you are wanting to start a company and be selling to having affiliates promote you and do direct marketing online, you need to be the CEO. So what you do is you find a copywriter who can do the copywriting for you. There's copywriters everywhere. And 80% of them suck, 20% of them are good, and among that 20%, 80% of them are not probably worth working with. You wanna find that you know, 4% of the copywriters out there that are amazing. You find them by meeting people at conferences, asking them who wrote their sales page, um, making those connections, um, being in masterminds with people, maybe like you are a sales background person and someone else in the mastermind is a copywriter and you're both kind of struggling because you both feel you have half of what you need to get done. Partnership, all of a sudden 50-50 ownership of something, you guys put your best uh, efforts in and you don't have to pay $20,000 to a copywriter to produce an amazing sales page because you have this, this partnership going on now. Um, or of course, like I said earlier, it takes 10 to 20 grand to start these products. You hire the right copywriter for the right project and you try and get referrals from being within a coaching program about who you should use. Because there's like four copywriters that I use. That's it. The rest of them are not, I'm not fans of. So it's knowing that story, knowing which avenue you want to do in your product, uh, which avenue of sales page you want to do for your product, um, getting a copywriter to help you produce it. And then from there, design and build, you basically just hire any, any web page builder you can that's referred to you by someone in, in uh, one of your coaching groups. My company does web page building design. There's dozens that do that. So um, they're out there. Those are kind of the key steps you need in order to have that original offer before you can test it to know the metrics, to make the affiliates friends. I just really want to make sure to kind of plant that seed for people out there so they kind of know that there is a prescribed step-by-step -step checklist of items and, you know, Gantt chart of things to go through. And you know, I teach all that in my course, but it's commonly known knowledge you can find out there about building offers. Thank you very much for your time and your energy, Cody. I appreciate it. Don't forget that entrepreneurship is a marathon, not a sprint. So take care of yourself every day. And if you're looking to launch something soon, think very deeply about what you say, how you say it, who you say it to, and how you get the people to come to you. Because if you're not thinking about those things, then you don't have a business. 100%. Thank you, Cody.